bottom. Go on frame 35. Open this up a bit more so we can see what we're doing. On frame 35, we're going to add a keyframe, hovering our cursor over top of this factor. Hit I. And then we're going to go to frame, what did I say, 90? Frame 90 and I think it was 90. Yeah, right. It was frame 90 and we're going to turn this all the way down to zero and then hit uh, I. Um, so that is that. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to change that from 90. We're going to go like uh, point, point zero, no, just point 0.1. Yeah, we'll go point 0.1 and then we'll hover our cursor over and hit I. And then on like frame 50, on frame 150, we will t t put it all the way down to zero. So now I just wanted that little bit of fade in so we have that, that little bit of comic still showing through there. So now what we've done is if we go through and we thumb through these keyframes, you'd be able to see that the Marvel slowly fades in. The comic book pages aren't going to change, but you can see how the animation of the fading is going to, is going to work. The Marvel word will fade in, and then the, the red will fade in completely with it, and then we will have our words completely done. I think we're going to want our in frame to be uh, 160. When, when do our words finally fin finish uh, animating? themselves yeah we're gonna go and we're gonna end this on one frame 150 just like that so how many seconds is that uh if we go back to default animation uh, and we go and we change this view to show seconds you should be able to see that that frame 160 so frame 150 is somewhere around uh, six ish seconds so now our animation is pretty much complete what we need to do now is go back and do a bit more compositing um, so in the main tab, which is where all of our nodes are, we're going to make sure we have everything we need before we finally render this bad boy. And with, uh, with all of our animation, we need to add in a bit of a Lomo because this needs more Lomo than it does. Cause the red doesn't have any Lomo at all, but the comic book pages do. So what we're going to do is add in a another multiply. We're going to duplicate this multiply. So shift D and place that right there. And with this, we're going to add in add converter, mat, not converter, uh, ellipse mask. And with this uh, ellipse mask, we're going to change the size of this. And I'll explain what this does in a second here. I'm going to make some space. Change the width of this. Well, the X and Y, actually, rather. Change the X and Y, eh, 0.5 is fine. We can leave that alone. And change the width uh, until it almost gets out to the edge of the the um, the scene. Um, so then we're going to hook up the mask to the bottom of the multiply right there. And some more space. We're going to hit add, uh, filter, blur. And we're going to hook that up right in between both of those. And what this is going to do is, uh, if, I, if I zoom in a little bit, we change this to fast Gaussian and turn on relative. Change these to somewhere around 50. We'll get a really nice 50 and like 20, I guess. 50 and 20 is nice. Uh, maybe we'll go 50 and 50. Eh, no, 50 and 20 was better. Uh, so we'll go to 50 and 20, maybe 30 and 20 actually. Yeah, 30 and 20. We'll go 30 and 20 and we will change that. That'll be pretty good the way it is. Um, so now we have a Lomo. So pretty much what this did is it said, take this ellipse that we had, uh, this ellipse, this hard ellipse, and then blur it by 30 pixels, 30% uh, and 20% on the X and Y axis. And, uh, and that is that. And it said multiply over top of, we can put it on an overlay actually. We can put it on an overlay if you want, um, which I might just do. I might put it on an overlay. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So uh, we'll put that on overlay. And this one, I don't think we can put that on overlay. Uh, I don't know. It gets too bright. So we'll put that on multiply. Um, so yeah, that is that. We can actually change around this color a little bit more if we wanted to. Something like that. Brighten it a little bit. Something like that. All right, that looks pretty good. And I think that is it for our nitpickiness. I mean, one, the biggest thing you have to remember to do before you go and spend hours on rendering this, change the viewer and add in a composite. Because if you don't add in the composite, then you won't be able to see anything. As you can see down here, it just changed from black to the actual scene. So if you don't do that, you won't be able to see anything at all. So you make sure you have to make sure that composite is hooked up or else you won't be able to see anything. So if we give this a quick render on a random, on a random frame, 
where Marvel is halfway in the picture, you should be able to see that we have uh, the, the first scene will render, then the second scene will render, and then once, once that's done, the third scene will render. So now, once all those are done, it will put them all together, just like over here. I'll put them all together, overlay them, overlay them, and then uh, put them all together in the end. So if I scroll to one of the frames where the words touched by Kai come into play, we should be able to see what, what kind of frame was that? What frame was that? Somewhere around right, right there. And we should be able to see that the, the words come in once again. And what we're going to need to do, the biggest one of the biggest things, like I said, you're going to make sure the sampling is all the same make sure the sampling for every single one of the scenes is the same make sure it's not low um, make sure that the resolution the biggest resolution uh, is on 100 percent make sure they're all on 100 percent or else they will not work um, properly so we can go back to main render this and render them all together you should be able to see the first one will go then the second one and then the third one as well so make sure all of these resolutions are on 100 percent because uh, every single scene is different, so make sure they're all, every, all three of these scenes are on 100%. And I'm going to actually change the resolution um, to get the widescreen effect. So we're going to go 2560 and leave that on 1080 because uh, 2560 is a full uh, 2K resolution. And then leaving the Y alone, it will actually make the camera thin, as you can see. So instead of 19, 20, 1080, we'll go 2560. And then it'll make it thin. But you have to do this on every single one of the scenes or else they will not render properly. 25, 60, 1080. And on words, 25, 60. No, 25, 60, not 10, not 15, 60. 25, 60 and make sure that is the way it needs to be. Um, the sampling on the Marvel scene with the words probably doesn't need to be turned up more than 100 samples. Um, on the red back, it doesn't need to be turned up more than like 20 samples since it's just a solid red background. And then on the main, we're going to have to probably turn this up to 128 for, for the main scene with the comic book pages that are scrolling with the motion blur. Alrighty. So, that is that. Once our scene is rendered, we will have 100% finished product. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this very long tutorial series of how to create a uh, a Marvel styled intro. I had a lot of fun making it. I really appreciate when you guys ask, uh, you know, what you guys like to see. I like I love helping you guys out. So uh, let me know down in the comment section what you want to see next time. Uh, hopefully you you are able to do this Marvel intro. And if you did do the Marvel intro, um, come back to the comment section once you finished it and post it on YouTube. I really would love to see it. Uh, be like, hey, Kai, I, I just uploaded and check it out. I would love to see your finished intro uh, for your Marvel-style scene, for your Marvel-style intro. I'll see you guys in this tutorial, but until then, bye.